Welcome along to our video series where we're going to be making ourselves a side scroller game in Scratch. Now, basically, the game's called Glacier Race, and we've got a red car and a blue car, so it's a two player game. What you have to do is just drive through the track here and collect as many gems as possible in the 20 second time limit. Now, that time limit will go up by one second each time you collect a gem, so it is possible to prolong the game and try and beat your opponent. A couple of other things um, with this game that you can do is you can actually run into your opponent and drive them off the road. If you do hit the edges of the road here, you will spin out and have a crash. Uh, you've also got some snowballs that will appear on the page as well as the gems, and you've got to avoid those snowballs, otherwise you will spin out and have a crash as well. You're also probably wondering what this penguin's doing over here. Well, the penguin is the race official, and at the start of the game, he appears on the page and he will ask for the player's names so he knows who's driving the red car and who's driving the blue car. And he will also reappear at the end of the game to tell you who the winner is. So I'm just going to play the game now and show you how it works and then we'll get started on making it. Okay, so you can hear some cool music in the background there. I'll just turn that down so I don't get drowned out. Now basically the um, little penguin is going to ask the red driver what his name is. It also shows him his controls are going to be WASD. So in the bar at the bottom here, we'll just put in Bob for the red guy's name. Then he's going to say, what's your name for the blue car? Okay, he's also going to say that the arrow keys are what he needs to use to get around. So let's stick Sue in the blue car. Press the green, green tick and the penguin says go. Okay, so it's game on. So I'm just going to use my arrow keys to move the blue car. And you can see that I can nudge the red car out of the way. I can move around. I can go up. I can go down. Saw my red car just then had a crash. I'll crash the blue car. He hits the side of the road and spin, spins out. You can hit a snowball and spin out. You can go around collecting gems and eventually gets to the end of the game and the penguin reappears and tells us who the winner is. So Bob is our winner as he collected the most gems. And you can see the gem totals up in the top left. All right. So that's basically all it is to our game. It's quite fun and addictive when you're playing against your mates, trying to get the highest score. So let's get started on making it now in a new document in Scratch. Now I'm using... Oops, I'll just stop that music. It is a bit annoying. Okay, so I'm in um, Scratch using the online version today. The online version is the same as the offline version, so everything I do here should be able to be replicated in the offline version of the program. So the first thing I might do is just give it a name at the top called Glacier Race. And you can see that we've got the cat on our screen, or on our stage. And we're not using the cat in today's game, so you can right-click on him and just delete him. That deletes him off the stage, as well as from your library. Now the first thing I'm going to do is actually draw a background on our stage here. Okay, so what we're going to do is go over to Paint a New Sprite option. So next to that little troll, we've got that little paintbrush. And we're going to call this sprite Road 1. It's a bit hard to see on my screen, but there is a checkered grid back there. You'll see it better on your screen, I'd say. And what we're going to do is draw the icy road, or our backdrop, onto this stage here. The thing you need to draw it is the brush tool at the top here. Once you've got your brush, go and pick yourself an, probably that aqua kind of colour, that dark aqua, or maybe even a darkish blue kind of colour. And make sure your line thickness, or the line width, is around that middle area. You want a reasonably thick line to draw the edges of the road. And we're going to start at the top of the page, and we're simply going to start drawing our road. Give it a couple of little curves, and then we're going to go back up the other side and do something similar. Now it's got to be wide enough this road to fit in two cars, remember? So don't make it too thin. Something like that's good. If you make a mistake, you've got your rubber there, and I can just see a little bit of a mistake at the top, so I'm just going to rub that out. That looks pretty good. Okay, so hopefully now, if you've got those lines connecting with the top and the bottom of the page there, you can go and grab your fill bucket from there, choose white as your colour, and just colour in the sides or the edges of the road now. So it looks like a snowy field and a road going through the middle. Okay, once you've got that, that's the first part of the road done. So you can go back to the scripts there to save that. Press that little black blue arrow if you haven't done so already, and you've got road one drawn on your page. What we're going to do now is just right click and we're going to duplicate that road. Okay, and you'll see road 2 appearing. It also appears on your page. It looks a bit of a mess, but that's fine for now. Now on road 2, what we want to do is go back to our costumes tab here and flip that upside down. 
Okay, and the way we do that is we just go up the top here and choose the flip up down button. Press that once and your road flips upside down. Go back to your scripts and you've got your two roads drawn. Now basically what we're going to do for our background here is have those two roads scrolling down the page at different times. So if I just go back to the original for a sec, there's our road in the background there. And when I press play, let's make up a couple of names here, those two pictures we just drew will scroll down the page and it's going to give the illusion that our cars are actually moving when they're not. It's actually the road in the background there that's moving down the page. Okay, it's just one road on the screen at a time and as it gets down to a certain point at the bottom of the screen, we're going to make it loop back around to the top and start falling down the page again. Okay, so there's always going to be one of the roads on the screen and the other one following behind it. Okay, and that just loops over and over again until our game stops. All right, so what we're going to do next is get some of the coding in to make this background work. And the way we're going to do our coding this time, slightly different to usual, but what we're going to do is paint a new sprite again. And this sprite's just going to be an empty sprite. All it's going to contain is some scripts or some code. Okay, so I'm going to hit the little information symbol and give it the name Game Loop. And then just press the back button there. So I've got this empty sprite here called Game Loop. Before we start coding it up, I just want to make a variable up, which is going to be our countdown timer. Just call it countdown and click OK, and you'll see that that countdown timer appears in our page. You can move it up and put it wherever you want. I think the top right-hand corner is going to be the best, okay, for a nice and neat-looking game, top right-hand corner for your countdown timer. You can see back on the original, that's where it is up the top there. Okay, it has a set to zero at the moment, that's fine. Um, we're going to change that a little bit later on in the game. So the first thing we want to do to get our game started is we want to go over to our events tab here and bring out when the start button or when the green flag is clicked. When that green flag is clicked, the first thing we want to do is broadcast the message and tell all the sprites in our game to get themselves into position ready to start. Okay, so we're going to broadcast a message. I'm going to right click on that message one and just rename the broadcast and we're going to call it setup click OK. So we're going to broadcast a message to all our sprites, even though there's only two sprites in our game at the moment, which is the two roads, but there'll be some more later on, and we're going to broadcast the message to all those sprites saying, get yourself sorted, get into position, we're ready to start the game. Okay. Um, now actually, what we're going to do, I just thought about this, we might take that off and choose the broadcast and wait message. Okay, we'll just rename that to set up again. Sorry, a little mistake from me there. So this is the one we want. We want to broadcast the setup message to get all our sprites into position. When they are into position, ready to start the game, just wait for the all clear to begin our game. Okay, we can actually start our game once we know the user's name. So when player one or the red car enters their name and player two enters their name, that's when we can start playing our game and we can get things moving. Okay, but at the moment we just get them set up into position and we wait for that moment. Okay. Once that moment does come and we've got both the players' names and we can start our game, what we're going to do is we're going to broadcast a couple more messages. Okay, the first one, I'm just going to change it from setup to a new message. And that new message is going to be called calculate. Click OK. And we're going to broadcast a second message. Just snap it onto the bottom there. And again, it's going to be another new message and it's going to be called move. And we'll click OK. And that's basically going to get our game moving, get things rolling. Now these two broadcast messages, we want them to keep repeating over and over again until our game stops or when that countdown timer gets back to zero. Okay, so what we're going to do is go to the control tab here and choose the repeat until loop and wrap it around those two broadcasted messages. So we're going to keep repeating our calculate and move messages until this countdown timer here gets back to zero. So I'm going to choose operators. I'm going to choose the less than symbol and drop it in there where it says repeat until. And from my data tab, I'm going to drag out countdown and put it in the first box. And I'm going to put one in the second box. So when our countdown timer is less than one second, so when it gets to zero, that's when our loop will stop. Okay, so this can now be dragged up and snapped onto the rest of the code. And finally, once this countdown timer stops so we get lower than one or we run out of time we just need to broadcast another message to our game 
and it's going to be another new message and it's going to be called game over no spaces just capital G and capital O it says game over alrighty so that's got some basic variables set up there's still a few more to go though so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our data tab here and we're going to make some more variables okay so click on the make a variable button there and the first one we're going to make is called road y okay, and that's going to be well it's going to store the y coordinates of our moving car so we'll click ok on that you'll see that road y appears on your stage we don't want that to appear in our game so just uncheck the box here that's next to road y and that will make it disappear we're going to make another variable now and it's going to be called car speed again no spaces okay variables can't have spaces in them so I just do a capital C and a capital S to distinguish the difference between the two words okay so we've got the car speed here just click OK and go and uncheck the box so that the little box that has appeared on our stage will disappear Okay, so we've got car speed and road Y now added into our games so now we can add a little bit more code so in the events tab we're going to go back to when I receive at the moment it says calculate we're going to change that to setup okay so when we press the green flag and that broadcasted message of setup is sent out to all our sprites to get into position and get ready what can we do in this section of code okay so when we get that setup mess setup message we want to set up a few of our variables so the first one in data we're going to bring out this set car speed we're going to change the car speed to road y and we're going to set the road y to zero then we're going to bring out another one that says set car speed we'll leave it at car speed this time we'll set it to five so our car's starting speed will be five and this countdown timer two is at zero we want to change that to 20 seconds so let's set the countdown to 20 okay and last of all in sensing just drop the reset timer at the bottom of that so each time we stop it and start again all of these settings will be reset okay just right click and click clean up on your page there and that's just going to clean up your code and get it all shoved up into the top left hand corner so just double check that you've got everything bang on at the moment if we press run nothing's going to be happening yet okay we'll fix that background in just a moment and get it to um start scrolling down our page okay so to do that what we're going to do is go back to the events tab now and we're going to bring out when I receive calculate okay, so we'll leave calculate there so when we get the message now to start our game calculate things what can we do well the first thing in data we're going to go to set and this time it's going to be we're going to need to make a new variable actually I haven't made it yet so let's make a new variable quickly I'm getting one step ahead of myself make the variable road speed okay remember all one word just a capital R and a capital S and click OK again road speed is going to appear on your stage you just need to uncheck it so it disappears from there now we can go back to our code and when we receive that calculate message we want to change the road speed so okay set road speed to minus five it's basically going to bring our road down the page at a speed of five Okay, it's going to go down the y-axis at a speed of 5. Then we're going to go over to change, where it says road speed, change that to road y. So change road y by, and what we're going to do is put road speed in there. So bring up that road speed variable and drop it on top of the one there to replace it. Okay, so change road y, so the y by the road speed. Now road speed is minus 5, so the road y coordinates moving at speed minus five next thing we're going to do in the control tab here we're going to just bring out an if then statement in the if then statement we need to bring in operators first of all and we're going to choose the less than symbol and put it between the if and the then so if road y let's bring out road y is less than minus 360 then we're going to change road y to 720 basically this section of code here is saying when our road gets lower or sorry gets below a 
a certain section it's going to loop around and come back to the top of our page and start scrolling down again okay so i'm going to right click and clean up that code now i'm just going to press the green flag and see if we have anything moving yet still nothing moving yet so it means we need to add a little bit more code okay so we've got our game loop all sorted let's go over to road one okay and we'll see if we can get road one moving now so the first event that we're going to hear is the setup event so let's bring out when i receive and choose setup what we want to do is get road one positioned on the stage to fill up the entire view on the stage okay so we're going to put it right in the center we'll choose go to x and y and set it to zero zero and that positions road one in the center of the page what we're also going to do to make sure it's behind everything else so it doesn't go to the top of this countdown timer or our cars later on when we add them in we're going to go to our looks here and just choose go back 10 layers okay so that's going to push our road behind everything else okay once we've done that we're going to well that's all set up now what we need to do now is tell it to start moving when the time is right so when we hear that broadcasted message to start moving so when i receive the move message we're simply going to choose the go to x and y again the x is going to stay as it is okay it's always going to be set to zero so in the center of the page but the y value is going to change we want it to start moving down the page so we just change it to the data y value or the road y there sorry right click clean it up let's see if we've got something moving now there we go so you can see that our road one is moving down the page it will keep going down it will disappear and then come back up the top and go again all right so that's looking good but we've got road two still sitting there stationary on the page which we need to fix up so let's go over to road two now okay and we're going to put a little bit of code on that so the first thing we need to do is get the setup message and bring that out so when i receive setup when we set up road two what we want to do is go to motion and choose the go to x and y values again this time x value is going to be 24 and the y value is going to be 360 so a little bit different to before and the same as road one we're going to send it back 10 layers so it's on the same layer as road one so it's behind everything else in our game as well and it won't over the overlap or go over the top of anything else so that's got it set up if we just run that now you can see that it's moved off the page it's up there ready to scroll it's just not scrolling yet okay so i'll stop that what we need to do now is wait for the move message to be broadcasted which means we're ready to start playing our game so when we get that move message we can start moving road number two okay and the way we're going to do that is go to the control tab here and we're going to choose the if then else statement okay, this is a bit of a bigger one we need to go into our operators here and choose the less than symbol and throw it in between the if and the then and it's going to be if road y is less than zero then in motion we're going to choose the go to x and y value again we're going to put that in there and down in there so it's in between the if and the else okay now the x values will both be zero for this so I set both x and x values here to zero the y values though will be different okay in the operators we're going to bring out the plus symbol for the first one and the minus symbol for the second one okay and in the first little circles we need to choose that road y value and whoops didn't do that right it needs to go in that first circle like that hopefully get it right on this one there we go road y and the first one's going to be plus 360 second one's minus 360. now i'm just going to right click on the page and clean up that code hopefully that will be it let's see if we've got our roads moving now there we go that's what i was looking for so we've got road one scrolling down the page when it gets to the bottom road two is already coming down the page and each time they hit the bottom they just loop back up to the top and start scrolling down the page again so it looks like a never-ending road but really it's just two pictures joined together okay so that's pretty cool so i'll stop that that's looking pretty good to make it look a little bit more realistic though we might stick a few trees around the outside of our game here so 
Back on road one, I'm just going to go to the costumes tab here so we can edit this again. And I'm going to go up to the add button at the top here and just add in some trees. If you scroll all the way down to where you would find trees, just get the one with a bit of snow on it and resize it and drop one in position. Now I'm going to press this control C and then control V to paste in another one. Control V again to paste in another. Throw in a few here and there. If you want to resize some of them so they look a little bit different to one another, by all means go for it. Might look a little bit more realistic that way. So that's road one, looking good. Over on road two now, if you click on the road two sprite, do the same thing. Just press Control V, throw in a couple of trees. Remember to resize the odd one here and there so they look a little bit different. Maybe make a bit of a bigger one here. All right. So now I'll just click back on scripts, that'll save those changes. And I'm just going to go full screen, because this is the last thing I want to do in the video now. I'm just going to run it. You can see now we've got some trees running down the sides of our page, which make it look a lot more realistic. Hopefully we can assume that that's snow out the side there, and this is the track that we need to be driving on. At the moment our countdown time is stuck on 20 seconds, but as I said before, we're going to put in some code later on to make that countdown. This is all I wanted to get done in the first video, get this background moving. That looks really good. So I'm going to stop that. Let's go back to my little screen and go to File and Save. Okay, I'm going to stop the video now. I'm going to come back in the second video and we'll get a car into our game and we're going to start moving our car. So I'll see you in the second video.